for Schultz Outfitters here for Smallmouth for nine years now. Um, and with a lot of time on the water fishing for smallmouth over the years, I, you know, we, we fish a lot of crayfish patterns. It's a, it's a dominant food source in our rivers, um, pretty much no matter what the river is. And I believe that anywhere you find smallmouth, whether or not there's crayfish present, they're going to know what it is and they're going to eat it. Traditional crayfish patterns were, were always lead based and fished in like a jigging motion. And which, which is great, I use them all the time, but there's always gonna be a place for them. But we have a lot of rivers here that have uh, a ton of wood scattered throughout. And so after a while, I got sick of chasing flies out of wood all day. And I thought, man, it'd be great to have a crayfish pattern that you can fish tight to and around and over top of wood um, without, without running the risk of snagging it and also being able to pause it without it dropping into it. And so, kind of started tweaking with a few different ideas and this has been going on for like three four years now um but i've arrived at this stage where it's it's a swimming crayfish pattern that i call the flea and cray it's got a single hook to it uh with a with a shank coming off the back and if you kind of take a look at it it's it's just classic swim fly design right you've got um, a joint in there, you know, some things like a game changer will have multiple other articulated flies will only have, you know, one, but so this one comes with one. There's some two hook versions out there that I'm doing as well. But the, my standard is this just single articulation, um, with a large bulky head in the front that is trimmed to shape to allow for more of a swim, kind of getting a drunken disorderly style dig out of it. This particular one I'm going to tie right now is going to be on a 26 degree down eye hook. Uh, you can also tie these on straight hooks. Uh, I run the down eyes anytime where we have larger water or just deeper sections in general where I actually want to get some dig and get it down. Um, when fishing these flies, it's pretty much always on a intermediate line. Uh, I have run them on some sink tips with plenty of success, but for our fisheries, we never have to go beyond an inter intermediate. So uh, that's a little background on the fly. As you can see, it's it's got a lot of different earth tones and colors to it. I don't adhere to any sort of standard coloration. You know, it's it's a crayfish pattern. And if you've spent any time handling crayfish, you'll see they come in all sorts of different color shapes and sizes. Um, so. I tend to mimic that as much as I can. You open up the box and they'll be, it's, it's by and large earth tones, but they'll all be different and all full of rubber as well. You know, it's bass aren't afraid to eat rubber, put as much of it in there as you want. You can always trim them out later. Um, but with that, we're gonna go ahead and get started here. All right, starting off with a 25 millimeter shank. And this is what's gonna build that rear portion, which on the crayfish would be the head and claws. Um, once it's in there, lay down a nice thread base over the whole thing. All right. Once your thread base is in, we're gonna start right away adding a whole lot of rubber. For this, we're using Span flex or sexy floss as it's called now. Okay, I'm starting with this golden color. Doesn't need to be any kind of exact uh, count on those, but generally when I grab a clump of it, it's about, you know, 10 to a dozen of them. And I'm gonna hang that off the back there. All right, and I'm not running it super long. We don't need it to be ridiculous but maybe about two times the length of that shank hanging off the back. Okay, get a couple of wraps on there to hold it in place, then cinch it down. And then you can go ahead and snip off those remainders. And just secure that rubber down as much as you can. After each step, I'm gonna take a little bit of this brushable super glue and lay some down. 
just adds to durability. All right, once that rubber's in, I'm gonna take some red. It's kind of more of a highlight piece. You know, I, I'll refer to these as antenna, but it's as much just something to throw a little color in there as anything. And with these ones, I always run them long just to give that illusion of antenna. So they're gonna run a little longer than the golden legs we laid in there. Right on the top, two of them off the back, and then generally I go ahead and just take those other two that are hanging off the front, fold them back in, and just add them to the bunch. Okay, our next step, we're gonna use this frenzy fly brush right here and we're going to tie this in throw a little bit of super glue down and what we're going to do is once we wrap this it's going to create kind of a bump that will help keep these legs spread apart all the time so they're not just sitting flush next to each other we don't need a ton of wraps three to four is usually good color on this particular material is sort of dealer's choice I tend to stick to golds and um, you know browns and earth tones in general just to stick with the idea of a crayfish in the first place Once that is wrapped down, trim her off, fold back that extra material, and just trap her down. Once that is in place, I'm going to go ahead and put down a little more super glue here because we are going to tie in the claws next. The claws are pine squirrel. Okay, and if you dig through a pack of pine squirrel, you'll find some nice, well-formed, kind of thicker, bushier pieces, and those are the ones I'm looking for. You can use skinnier stuff too. I, you know, definitely have used it as I've gotten down towards the end of a pack, but they tend not to last as long just because that leather's not as robust on the thinner pieces as it is on these thicker ones. When you tie these in, you're going to tie one end on either side of the shank. And in terms of proportioning, they should be a little shorter than what your antenna and kind of legs are coming off the back. And this is optional, but it's something I like to put in. It's these little mono eyes, all right? They come in all sorts of colors. The ones that we have here are kind of this tannish, sandy color. Um, it's just called natural and we're going to hang these off the back this is not anything that is necessarily important to the swimming action by any means I think it just looks cool tying these in can be a little trickier because it's that stiff mono and so you usually end up having to wrap down the shank just a little bit to make sure these are nice and secure got one in stick number two now that I've got those secured, I'm going to go ahead and get my thread right back up to the claws. Now, because that mono is there, it's going to cause your thread to slip, and that's fine. You just have to make touching wraps until you climb your way back up to the top. All right, touching, touching, and we're basically at the top, right where we would have finished off with the, with the legs and all the other materials. So that mono is now in. I'm going to go ahead and lay down some more glue. So our next deal is this leggy brush here I'm using the half inch okay once that's tied in right at the back you're gonna take your thread up to the eye of that shank and we're gonna make some touching wraps all the way to the front here. This is building the body out. The trick with this material is after each one, you need to fold the legs back. 
Otherwise, you're just going to trap them down. All right, once I'm almost to the eye, you don't need to take it right to it, but pretty dang close. I'm going to tie this material off. And I'm going to trim it. Do a little primping here. Make sure we're tied down well. All right. And then something I'll do is kind of work these legs around a little bit just to get them mostly oriented to the sides and the bottom and then something I do it's not totally necessary I just think it leads to a kind of a crispier finish on the fly is I'm going to trim this anything sticking up here kind of flat right including that little bit of a from that frenzy fly brush all right and I'm going to do get rid of that leg there because we're going to we're going to put one more thing up here and it's a mallard flank back that's going to sit over it like a cap. I just want it to sit pretty dang flat. The flank selection itself is sort of the tricky part. You, you know, just any rando flank isn't necessarily going to do. You don't want it to be oversized. It's a waste of a good large feather. So something like this is just going to hang out there way too far. And we also don't want it to be an asymmetrical feather. You know, try to find... The most symmetrical one you can that isn't curved, do there. All right, so we're gonna use this one. You don't need to use the whole feather, kind of size it up. We got those mono eyes there, and I want the tips of that feather to almost come to the, the eye at the end of the stalk. All right, not quite to it. Go ahead and lay that fella Get off there. on there. We're laying it just right flush to the top. I'm tying it in and I'm gonna have that mallard uh, stem kind of go just past the eye of the shank for a reason. I'm then gonna fold that back. All right, this just helps me lock it in a little better. I'm gonna go ahead and whip finish this piece okay cut that and I'm gonna put some super glue on that thread head but we're not quite done yet next thing I'm gonna do gotta get out your solar res or whatever UV activated curing you like to use and we're using the flex stuff so it comes out pretty thick it takes a minute to get it going once it's on there you I usually run one strand right up the stem of the feather and then you can use a brush or the tip of your bottle here and I just try to feather that out to either side of the stem. Now I've seen uh, some people tie this and they do great. I'd say the one thing I see most often is like way too much on this step. It's not necessarily meant to create an epoxied finish like it's a lure. It's more just to keep that thing stiff and durable over time. Okay, so doesn't run the whole length of the feather. It sort of just, it feathers out from the stem and runs down the length of it and then we cure it. So that is the back end of the fly. Our next step is we're gonna take a second shank, uh, 25 millimeter, I like using long ones. You're going to hook that in through the eye of the shank of the rear of the fly. Stick the new one in the vise. Lay down a thread base real fast. 
doesn't need to be perfect. I'm just doing this to give uh, to give us something to bite into when we lash this to the front hook. All right. For the front hook on this particular one, we're going to tie. We've got the Airx 26 degree jig. It's the TP650, and I'm using a two op. So this is kind of the larger version. Before we attach the shank to this, we're going to do a little bit of trickery here. Nothing new, but we're going to put a uh, keel on the bend of the hook. A bunch of ways to do this. It's just how I've always done it. I'm going to run that thread all the way down the bend here. give us something to build on. I'm gonna grab my lead, my, where'd you go here? Thank you, sir. My 030 lead wire. And you don't need a ton, three, four inches or so, a length that you can work with. I'm not at the top of the bend quite. I'm just a little bit down the length of it here. All right, and I'm going to lay this wire on the back. I'm going to wrap down gently because if you pull too tight, you'll slice that lead. All right, to where I stop my thread, and then I'm going to come back up with it. I'm going to get this vice or this bobbin out of the way, and I'm going to wrap my wire up the bend. And where I'm going to stop wrapping will be right where I started, kind of where the other end of the wire is, where I started tying it onto the shank, which is right up in here. There's that. So I got my keel on there. Pet peeve over the course of the season is uh, keels that fall off because they weren't adequately secured. And so I probably overdo it on this, but I'd rather do that than run the risk of failure. So I wrap my thread down the length of it, come back up, just gives it something to grab onto, and then I'm gonna go ahead and flex seal that in there as well. Run a thin line up the length of the wire on one side, down the length on the other, and then just kind of feather that over and around, and then give it a nice curing. All right, that's pretty good. Now that we've done that, we can attach the shank. So, <clears throat> with this, I like to leave that rear eye of the shank that we're attaching hanging off that back just a little bit nothing crazy far but it doesn't need to be flushed up against the hook this gives us a little freedom and i laid this down the side of this and then the reason i like to use these longer ones is you can get it down the side and then with your thread wraps you can sort of bend around the the remainder of that thing and it really locks it in. These will not come off. And unlike using a wire connection, it also won't weaken over time. I don't skimp on the wraps here. I really secure it down. All right, and then add glue. All right, back to the Frenzy Fly brush here. We're gonna, just like we did earlier, we're gonna create another bump. Right. And we start it right at the back, right where we finished off tying in that, that shank to attach. And just like the one earlier in the fly in the rear, it doesn't need to be a ton of wraps. You know, three, four wraps is pretty much all you wanna do. <clears throat> the main reason we're doing this is just to kind of cover our connection for us, cleans up the fly a little bit. 
side off, trim, do a little cleaning here, brush your fibers back, lock them in. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to grab this one inch lively leg brush here. We're going to tie that in right where we left off. Okay. And then we're going to add a little more hardware. So got these glass rattles. This particular one is a two bead glass rattle. I'm going to put down a little bit of super glue. And this is gel super glue. All right. And we're going to lay it right on there. And I'm keeping this kind of towards the back. Do your best to make sure this thing sits as close to on top as you can get. You don't want it to lean or tilt, it'll throw off the swim of the fly. Alright, I'm not going too crazy, just nice firm thread wraps with that glue on the bottom. It, it, it cures pretty quick. I'm going to go ahead and hit it with some liquid too. I'm also going to move my thread out of the way here. So once that's reasonably dry to the touch, you're going to take that lively leg brush and this builds kind of the bulk and a lot of the legs on the fly here that you see on the bottom of it. All right, I'm going to do a couple of wraps behind it and then I'm going to go ahead and start wrapping right over the top. This isn't necessarily pretty, but it's all going to get, for the most part, covered up anyway. It just adds bulk and body and legs. Okay. Get to the front of that. I'm going to add a couple more wraps just in front of the uh, rattle before I tie this thing off. All right. And I'm backing this up for a reason. I really have to. We got a lot of steps left with not a ton of space. And a big chunk of this is gonna be taken up by head. So um, you'll see me kind of wrap over materials at time and it's just because I am trying to build that bulk as much as I can. With these uh, brushes, it is a good idea to use, you might trap some rubber legs in there, use the tips of your scissors to pluck them out, hit it with a wire brush, anything just to clean this up. All right, now, for the most important part of the fly is building the carapace. And for that, feather selection again is key. Um, you're gonna need three. Basically what we're gonna do is we're gonna do one on either side and one over the top. And then we're gonna end up hardening them up just like we did on the rear. And that'll give it that nice that kind of that shelled look to it all the way around. All right. As we know from other flies that these flanks also will kind of cause that fly to swim in a more erratic fashion. It gives that water a nice hard flat surface to push against. So I got three really nice feathers here. One thing I want to show is all of these feathers are relatively symmetrical, okay? And kind of have like just, just a really nice elongated build to them. I don't want really wide, flat feathers. I want all those fibers to just run long and be almost spear spear tipish okay so i'm going to use these two smaller ones for the sides i'm going to size them up first by laying them along the length of the fly 
and I don't need them to go all the way back like this. That is going to ultimately restrict movement of that rear shank. Where I actually want them to go is to roughly the tips of the Frenzy Fly brush that you put in at the, at the rear of the uh, front hook. So I'm gonna size that up, get an idea of where they wanna go, okay? Give myself a little room to tie that thing in. All right. And then I'm gonna tie it in. I'm gonna start it on the side closest to me first. Okay, there's one. Same thing. Size it up just a little past that frenzy fly brush. All right. Make sure everything's all good there. Okay, this is kind of, uh, there we go, got her. So we got those two in there. Looks good, looks good. Next up, we've got to cap off the top. This should work. Yeah, that's gonna work. With the top piece, again, I want the tips of this feather to line up with the tips of the, the two side flanks. All right, so I already sized it up, I trimmed it, and it's gonna end up, I'm gonna go ahead and just get rid of this here. It's gonna end up laying through and being flush At first, it's not gonna sit right. And that's fine, because we're gonna make it do it when it comes down to this next step. All right, you can see it's kinda, kinda popped up there. By the time I finish with the next thing, it'll all be capped. This becomes a little more intense. So we're gonna take this UV Flex. Give me a second here. And just like that last one, we're going to run it up the spine, the stem of this feather. Go ahead and flatten that out. Just like this. And then, to really make this work, I'm going to end up running glue down the sides of this feather onto this one. All right, not glue, but this, this flex resin. And... I'm gonna trap it there with that light. Okay, just takes a minute. I'm building it up along the lengths of this. And then I'm gonna just spread it right down the sides. Just like this. Okay, now that's gonna lock in. Go ahead and do that one. I'm gonna keep going real thin, not just loading this on there for the sake of doing it. I'm gonna keep adding this here down the length of the side flank and then I'm gonna spread it down. Okay, just nice and even as much as we can. It's all about reinforcing it at this point. Alright, and then I gotta do it on the side towards me. Same thing, I'm gonna start at the on the top feather near the edges. Run a few veins down that, and then I'm gonna just spread it down onto the side. I'm leaving uh, as much as I can the the very tips of these untouched. I want those to flex still. The reason being when this thing's moving around and swimming. I don't want it to be like a super rock hard um, barrier. So if this thing can kick a little, that'd be great. Now you do have all this material coming off the back that is going to flow around as much as you want it. But I'm not too concerned about 
constant serpentine action with this at all. It was tied more to do a hard side-to-side -side kicking motion. So I don't mind if it's a little stiffer than maybe what you think it should be. Done curing. Go to the next step. All right, next thing. Remember, bass fishing, rubber. Don't be afraid of it. Rubber legs, honestly, of choice. Keep it reasonable. Um, these are these kind of like ridged rubber legs. Shop got in, kind of like that. Just adds a layer of texture to it. Um, for this one, let's see, I just grabbed a clump off here. It looks like there's six legs in this clump. And I just tie it right along the side of this thing. All right, just like that. I'm going to start on the side closest to me and then work towards you. Let's get this back up there. Now ultimately, it just needs to be on there. It's going to look ugly for a minute and I honestly don't care. Because uh, you're going to end up wrapping this with rabbit, covering most of that. As long as the legs are in there and not kicking off at goofy angles. We'll be fine. More rubber legs on this side. Lengthwise, I'm taking them to about the tips of the uh, carapace here. Right. Now we got a quick dozen legs on there now. I'm going to add more. I like putting blue in my crayfish patterns whenever I can. It's a nice hot spot. So just this kind of clear, clear barred blue rubber leg. Uh, just adding four to each side now. So that'll give you a grand total of 20 legs you've added into this thing. On top of all the legs from the brush and the legs in the rear, same thing, just laying them over. Don't care if they're a little long, you can always trim that. Next up is the rabbit. You can use whatever color rabbit you want. I tend to run something pretty hot. So we got this kind of shrimp pink rabbit here. I'm just gonna lay that leather on, tie that in not being shy about securing it. Okay. Got to get those rubber legs out of the way. Really wrap that. Doesn't need to be a lot of wraps. Two, max three. I'm gonna go ahead and do three. Slick all that rabbit hair back and just really get that leather bound down. All right, so we're getting there almost to the last piece, which is going to be building the head of this fly. For the head, we're using crustaceous brush. key thing with this is don't overdo it. Don't jam up that eye because this is a bulky material. All right. Kind of make sure that your brush is in good order here. Picked apart. It's not necessarily the cleanest material in the world, but it looks great. So after each and every, I'm in a, like a constant state of managing these fibers and pulling them back because I just don't want them to get too trapped under themselves. So after each and every wrap, I'm brushing them back. And then the next one, these wraps are 
pretty much touching. Touching, you know, wire brush is a great tool at this point. Wrap, brush. Wrap. Okay, looks like I got maybe, you know, certainly one more, maybe max two more wraps available with the spacing of this. Try one more here. Oh yeah, we got that. So I am at the eye of the hook now, which means I am done wrapping this material. Yeah. And really get this thing wrapped down. Doesn't need to be a lot, just gotta have it down. Take a little bit of super glue, dab that there. Okay, whip finished. So we're almost done. Now we got to do some trimming here. This trim is not super precise. It's not going to be drunk and disorderly level of precision. Um, we just want a bulky head with a rough trim job. I do go flat underneath and I do go uh, relatively straight along either side of the fly. Um, but then on the top, I'm going to maintain some level of curvature while just kind of uh, picking away at this stuff and so what that looks like I will usually pull this material because it's, it's all slicked back from all the brushing I'll pull this material up and then I will pull it out and I'll just start trimming this flat straight across cuts will do. I don't go straight for the for the low cut. I'll kind of work my way there. Show you what I'm doing here in a sec. So just cut straight along the bottom. So you got a nice flat. This is the bottom of the fly. It's nice and flat there. Okay. Then I'm going to make a couple of cuts going down either side of this just to get rid of these cheeks. Okay. So you got a couple cuts going down either side. And then the next thing I'm gonna do, I'm gonna actually take this out of the vise and just hold it in my hand so I can just a little more easily trim around the top. If you can do it in your vise, do it. But I've always had an easier time just holding it. I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna make these cuts going at a rough angle. All right, we got a 26 degree down eye hook I'm sort of cutting on a 26 degree angle here. All right. Just trying to build. Some level of taper. Now, like I said earlier, this doesn't need to be super precise like a drunken disorderly needs to be. This is more about just having bulk at the front that looks presentable and sort of adds to that crayfishy taper. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and leave it at this point. All right, so you kind of see 
flat chin, cleaned up the cheeks, and gave a little haircut over the top, leading to this taper here that'll also allow some dig. We got one more step to do, and that's gonna be using that same flex cure around this just to stiffen it up, all right? The whole thing, the chin through here, it'll also help shape it and it'll hold its shape better over time. So when I do this, I'll usually start it right down low. And I'll run a little to the left and the right of the hook, starting with just the very face of the fly. And if you look, I'm starting low and sweeping the application back, helping to shape this head. And I'm just little amounts. Do not overdo this. And on the bottom, I'm applying it in a fashion that helps sweep it flat. Not gonna be perfect, we're just looking for a general shape here. So now that I've got this thing well coated, sort of finger spread it around a little more if you wish, I'm gonna go ahead and zap it. Cool. All right, so that is the finished product of the flea and cray. Bass fly, trout fly, pike love to eat it too, whatever you want. It can be tied in a number of sizes. This is one of the bigger versions. It's got two hook versions and really small versions as well. That's it.